Hello, hello everyone. Uh, so it is Sunday here. Um, up in Canada, we have gotten our first major snowfall this weekend, so hence why I'm bundled up and got my cool little hat on. Uh, winter is here to stay, I think, so we pretty much skipped all of autumn, and here we are. Um, so I'm going to do a video here uh, as civil and uh, serious as I can. This is in response to the uh, questions for anti-SJWs questions. So uh, I fall under this category, uh, basically not really liking SJWs and their tactics. Uh, so I'm going to have my attempt at answering their questions as nicely as I can. So let's all jump right in, shall we? Are you able to understand the irony of responding to the perceived political correctness of the left with exasperated reactionary hypersensitivity of your own? Uh, he makes a valid point here. Uh, basically, everybody's getting emotional on both sides. It's just that, however, PC culture um, in the past, a couple of decades ago, was basically about respecting others, uh, trying not to step on anybody's toes. Uh, however, now, in the present time, PC culture is literally about censorship of others, about shutting down conversations. It's not so much about being civil anymore, it's about control. Uh, so I think being PC, just for the sake of trying to be morally superior, that wasn't the whole point of being politically correct. Now it's a matter of shutting down people who may or may not understand uh, your feelings or your past history or association with a particular group or minority. So, like, I refuse to be PC just so I don't offend you because it's not a crime to offend. What is it with you people and skulls? I don't even know who you're talking about, so I'm not going to answer this. How do you define right wing? Anti-SJWs often have an aversion to being labelled as right-wing, yet they regularly defend the right and bash the left. Therefore, why is being labelled right-wing a bad thing to you? Uh, just to quickly answer this, I grew up as a liberal person. I went to a liberal arts college and pursued the arts, so I always had this um, perception of reality and society where it was about other people's feelings, it was about not hurting or offending. I had an aversion to right-wing people because that was seen as the extreme traditionalism, you know, back from the 1950s where man uh, worked and brought home the bacon, the woman stayed home and was a housewife and mother to children. Um, so to me, that was what right-wing entailed. It was against homosexuality, it was against changes, it was all about rigid conformity, which as an artist, I didn't appreciate and therefore I didn't associate with. Um, in today's time, I'm no longer liberal uh, because I find that the extreme liberal side or the left wing is all about their feelings, all about censorship. It's all about these restrictions that used to be associated with the right wing. Uh, now, to answer your question, a lot of people don't associate with the right wing because I feel that it is still seen as the traditional rigid uh, controlled aspect of the political spectrum. Um, so you'll get a lot of people who are both non-left, uh, or sorry, non-extreme left and non-extreme right, and you get a lot of people somewhere in the middle. Now for me, I'm leaning more towards center right wing because I believe in a strong family unit to help build and encourage young children and give them the most stability in their lives and teaching them how to take care of themselves so that they can be functional adults in society. Um, those of you on the left side, the way I could describe it is that you're more concerned with how things should be without accepting how they are. Whereas uh, more right-wing leaning people, we defend that more because we are trying to salvage what you have destroyed for the past couple of decades. Family units have been broken down and it's all sporadic and crazy. Um, being politically correct and censoring other people's freedom of speech just because it may or may not offend you. Like, it's all about your feelings, which associates with a lot of ego and a lot of narcissism. So I don't associate with the far right wing, but I am definitely going to be in support of the right wing versus the left side. I just don't like the bullshit. 
And if it's because right-wing is used as a pejorative, can you not see how labeling people as SJWs or regressives is also pejorative? Yeah, it's fun. Get over it. Rather than telling people you disagree with to drink bleach, wouldn't it be more productive for you to have an actual conversation about the issues you feel matter? Or is it just easier to do the bleach thing? And this is why we make fun of people like you. You SJWs think we are literally telling you to drink bleach. We're not. It's a figure of speech because we find your approach and uh, perspective on things, on serious topics like racism and immigration and uh, borders and all that, to be so ridiculous that we are saying you should go and drink bleach. We're not literally telling you to drink bleach. And if anybody does that and thinks this way, well... You know, we'll just get rid of their stupidity out of the gene pool. You claim to be proponents of rational, logical, evidence-based argumentation. That's great. That's entirely laudable. But when I look at your online activity, when I look at, I don't know, for example, your Twitter feed, that's often not what I see. How do you reconcile this claim to be evidence-based and rational and logical against stuff like, oh, I was just trolling you, Oh, I was just shit posting or TLDR. First off, sir, this is the internet, okay? We have the freedom to post and look at things and find all information. Um, I'm kind of naive about the internet still. I didn't know about 4chan until like three years ago. Um, there are spaces on the internet which allow for people to be more expressive. Online dating, uh, social media outlets such as Facebook and Twitter, Instagram. A lot of these things have different rules for their platforms. Uh, so Instagram is more based on photos and images, whereas Facebook is more social commentary, social interaction. Uh, Tumblr, stay away from Tumblr, okay, because it's fucking insane. It's the internet. You're going to get every sort of people. You're going to get some nice people, some trolls. Uh, and yes, there is the occasional bully on there. Uh, your side is not innocent in this, as I've seen many SJWs completely shame and act morally superior to people who are actually having or trying to have rational discussions about things. Um, a lot of people I find uh, who are logical and use their brain instead of their heart to try and get their point across, those are the people that we need to uh, listen to. But it's it's Twitter, okay? Twitter is a cesspool of people's opinions and you know trolling like that's just the website now and it's completely failing right now uh with the sjw side completely censoring people with differing opinions than your own so it's failing in the sense that you are getting so butthurt over other people's trolling or their civil discussions plus we only have like what 140 characters to get down a like huge conversations it is such a small frame to tackle uh, loaded questions and loaded topics. So, of course, we're going to be snappy. Of course, we're going to be sarcastic. And yes, of course, we're going to make fun of you. That's just the platform. If you want a platform with reasonable, logical, civil discussions, create your own. No, seriously. What is it with you people and skulls? What is it with your obsession with people and skulls? The skull is part of the human body, which houses our brains. So like it, I don't know, maybe we are focusing on it as a means of poison for toxicity um, against SJWs and your illogical uh, fucking whining. Or maybe it's to symbolize the brain and that we need to return to intellectual thinking, intellectual conversations. Uh, some of us just have a skull fetish. Like what's with the clutter in the back of your <laughs> video there? Huh? Are you a hoarder? Are you aware that the ridiculous buzzwords you helped to popularize, like SJW and cuck and regressive, have all lost whatever meaning they once had, and only serve now as catch-all insults and pejoratives to derail any meaningful conversation? Yeah, that's right. The same way that you turn misogyny, rape, rapists, rape culture, um, <laughs> feminists, uh, MRAs, trolls, like... All of these terms uh, are starting to lose meaning because you've overused them yourselves. The reason why these words, as you think, are being overused and losing all meaning is because we are using it as a form of defense against you. The, the idea that uh, misandry does not exist in Western culture, whereas misogyny does, that is a ridiculous notion because we do have people who express very openly 
misandry or the hatred of men towards people online. Clementine Ford, for instance, Anita Sarkeesian in social media and in regards to gaming. Like, they are blatantly hating men and feeling that they can get away with it. But when a man such as me, a white male, makes fun of Clementine Ford, for instance, and points out a flaw in her argument, I'm already labeled as misogynist simply for the color of my skin and my sex. So you create these double standards and... This is why all these words are losing meanings because you guys overreact to everything and you keep redefining these very serious terms. So we'll keep using these terms such as crybabies and SJWs to explain how you are. And that's just the way it is. Get over it. For the last time, what is it with you people and committing actual literal felonies? Like, you might want to work on that? You're really stupid. I'm sorry, I just... You're really annoying, so I'm going to drink my Cuban rum to numb the pain. In videos and in the comment sections, anti-feminists often take up the most extreme or the weakest feminist position they can find, or they just straight up misrepresent what the feminist position is. Instead, why not take up the strongest, most robust feminist argument you can find and really challenge yourself? That's actually a very good question. Um, in hopes to answer this question, it's because what we see online are those types of feminists who are so naive about their own movement, who don't really think uh, through what they are trying to get across. Then we have the extreme radical feminists or feminazis who are blatantly hating on other people and shaming them with their bully tactics. This is all we're getting. The, the reasonable feminists somewhere in between are either silent or they are not on the internet or they don't have these access to this thing as much as we're we're just exposed more to the radical idealists than we are with the regular people so why don't you as a reasonable feminist start calling out your own i see in the mra movement uh, a lot of people are calling out those aggressive uh, men basically trolls under the false name of mras um, egalitarians such as myself, we focus on the seriousness of the situation. Um, so, like, we, we are calling out our own. And feminists, however, are not calling out their own. They're not correcting uh, things that have been debunked, like the gender wage gap and that we, you know, live in a rape culture. Uh, and the false rape statistics that have been boosted up in order to create rape hysteria on college campuses. It's just a whole bunch of people not understanding their own argument and it's getting frustrating so yes i i'm willing to listen to reasonable feminists you know christina hoff summers wendy mcelroy i'm listening to these women who are intelligent who don't hold the whole society or patriarchy um as the one evil thing like they don't hold it against us they are willing to be more open-minded therefore I should give them the same courtesy and be the same open-minded as well. It's just that they are so rare and far in between that it is difficult to have these con um, constructive discussions when all you see on the internet are the dumb feminists and the really extreme ones. I am deeply concerned with male addiction rates, suicide rates, and abuse rates because I have worked with these issues in the quote-unquote real world. Would you be willing as anti-feminists to put aside your differences with feminists for the greater good of addressing these issues, especially as the kind of solutions needed are not necessarily gendered? And if so, I would actually like you to let me know, because I'm not fucking around or presenting any gotchas here. I actually really think that we could get something done if we work together. Congratulations on helping people who are in need. I'm fully supportive of that. Um, and I think you have a good statement. Um, I am willing to put aside my personal uh, viewpoints about feminists and SJWs in order to get the job done. You sound very reasonable and you sound like your uh, heart is in the right place in wanting to help individuals. The issue that we take with SJWs and feminists is that the story is usually always a victim oppressor narrative where men are the oppressors and women are the victims and that's it. 
we are more willing to listen to you when you actually include males, both men and boys, who are being victimized by our system into uh, your help. You can't just help one gender over another, right? There's a lot of people who require help, not just women and girls. And any feminists or SJWs that fall on this victim-oppressor narrative, as I call it, is helping no one, okay? You stigmatize a whole group while victimizing another one. So if you are more than willing to include and understand that this system is not just, you know, against one group and for another one for benefits, like we are more willing to listen to you. So to answer your question, yes, I would put aside my personal viewpoint against feminists and SJWs if there is indeed a job that needs to get done. And I assess that you, the individual, are genuine in your desire to help. What is third wave feminism? Fucking Steve Shives. You're a fucking cock. Because I've often heard you folks insist that you have no objection to feminism in general. It's specifically third wave feminism that you have a quarrel with. So what is third wave feminism specifically? And what specifically about third wave feminism do you have such a problem with? We don't. Because a lot of the times uh, the general message of feminism uh, in order to help people is actually a good message. It's just that people like you, who are totally narrow-minded, idiotic, and believing in garbage, in lies and propaganda, are fuddling it up for the rest of us. You are the people who are messing up the message of what true feminism is. You just don't see it, and that's what's frustrating. In Western society, women are completely equal to men under the law. We all share the same legal rights. And in fact, women have a lot more privileges because women as a whole are more valued than men are. Men are more disposable and women are more valued uh, due to our biology. Women give birth to the next generation, whereas men are uh, less valued because we're just a sperm bank. Technically, like that's what it is. I'm sorry to say. But the problem we have with third wave feminism is that you constantly are whining about shit constantly shaming others and shutting down people's uh, different experiences and opinions. Like, I'm a bisexual male uh, who is tired of people treating the gay community as if we are fucking victims. I'm tired of it. And I'm tired of seeing people in the gay community who are using this victim card in order to bully their own way uh, and getting their own way. Like, I'm just, I'm tired of it. It's fucking bullshit. So when third wave feminism is all about whining about first world problems, you know, man spreading, sexist air conditioning, this is really something that can be dealt with on an individual level, which means that these people who are whining should grow up and act like adults. So I'm sorry to say, when you are an adult or capable of doing something on your own as an independent with agency, you know, the whole point of feminism for women, when you have this capability, but you choose not to take it and instead bitch about stupid problems and point the finger to somebody else who had nothing to do with your problems, that's, that's why we have problems with third wave feminism. You are, you are grown up whiny babies, okay? Pull your bootstraps up, grow a pair of balls, and get the job done. Why is it that this feminist... <laughs> <laughs> Trickly puff represents all feminists, but this men's rights activist doesn't represent all men's rights activists. Whoa, whoa, wait! Sexism all of a sudden? Ladies and men are different. So um, first off, that's just a video of some random guy. We don't absolutely know for sure that they're an MRA, unless it was specifically stated that he was an MRA or it came out of his own mouth. We don't know. Whereas Trigley Puff, uh, after doing some research on her, actually is a body positive activist. She is a feminist, I believe. And she's she was at a seminar shutting down a female feminist, Christina Hoff Summers. She was acting deplorable, to quote Hillary Clinton, um, and not being open-minded and creating an echo chamber. Like, you don't get anything done when you are not exposed to certain things that might offend you or might make you think outside of your box. That guy in the McDonald's doesn't prove that he was an MRA. 
You're just assuming. Why am I continually asked to answer for the views of feminists if I agree with feminism's overall aims, but don't agree much with those particular feminists? Does that mean that I can ask you to answer for anybody who labels themselves similarly to you, even if you don't agree much? I don't speak for anybody else. I speak for myself. It's just that other people who label the same as me, like egalitarians, or who label under a certain thing, like, labels don't really matter. If a feminist agrees a lot with how I feel about uh, male uh, rape victims of women, then I am more likely to listen to her. We don't care about labels. We care about your ideas and we care about you getting stuff done, okay? Merit is what's Im important nowadays, whereas the left side, the SJW side, are more focused on labels. You may not be, uh, by what it sounds here, but like the majority of feminists and SJWs are constantly, constantly judging others based on how they label. The other side of the spectrum, we're basically judging you based on your actions. And we're trying to get that across that actions mean more than labels. If SJWs are bad because they spend too much time whining and don't talk about real problems, then why aren't you talking about those problems instead of just whining about the other people over and over and over for literally years? Twice now you've commented about what is it about uh, anti-feminists and anti-SJWs with their obsession with skulls. You aren't talking about real problems. So far you have brought nothing to this table, okay? I've answered uh, other SJWs questions based off this video in a most reasonable way that I can. I've brought more uh, issues to the table than you have. So you are the one so far doing all of the whining, complaining about our criticisms. At least with our criticisms, we are trying to tackle the topic, and that topic is your guys' questions. You have brought nothing. Why don't you seem as concerned with actual feminist theory in academia as you are with wrecking people for views? Well, it's the internet. And if we can wreck somebody by proving uh, their hypocrisy or their contradictions or their downright lies, like the gender wage gap, like, of course we're going to do it. We want to we wanna one-up you, okay? Imagine the world like Super Mario World. You defeated the boss that was in front of you, and then you got a one-up. It's a good feeling, and that's why we do it. Since so many of you profess to be admirers of second-wave feminism as opposed to third-wave feminism, I thought it would be interesting to ask which second-wave feminists in particular do you appreciate? Which books written by second-wave feminists have you read and found interesting? Which second-wave feminist activists have you specifically admired as you formed the opinion that you like second wave feminism, but you have no use for third wave feminism. I'm just curious. I'm just curious, Steve Shives. How short of a leash does your wife have on you? How does it feel that being a male feminist that you're not even taken seriously amongst other feminists who are women? To answer your question, I don't really read a lot of feminist uh, books per se, but I do follow Christina Hoff Summers and I have uh, interest in her books there. Uh, as I stated before, Wendy McElroy, any type of woman, even if she labels as a feminist or not, any type of woman I find who is an independent person who has had hurdles thrown at her in her past, but still is willing to overcome that, you know, like Wendy McElroy was in fact raped. She is a rape survivor, but she doesn't blame all men. She only blames the one man who raped her. She understands that there's no rape culture because of this act that happened to her, unfortunately, but she is willing to logically walk through step by step in order to solve a very serious problem. So I respect women like that. I respect women who, you know, who wanted to pursue a career and without shaming or stepping on somebody, accomplish that goal. So there are strong women who do this and there are strong men who do this. Like, I understand that there's going to be people who are smarter than me or more talented than me in certain uh, career choices or fields. Uh, and that's okay. If they're happy doing what they're doing, there's no problem. I'm happy doing what I'm doing, and that's no problem. It's people like you in the third wave feminism movement who are trying to tell everybody how things should be, like, or or not accepting the uh, restrictions or the hurdles that some people do face. We're human beings. We're flawed, okay? We're going to make mistakes, and those mistakes allow people to learn from them if uh, they don't uh, throw in their emotions into it. Mm -hmm. 
So with these mistakes, you learn from these mistakes, you learn about your own flaws and your accomplishments, and then you pursue something that you're strong at. You pursue the, the road to happiness. And third away feminism just doesn't do that.